What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. Uh, we have another amazing young guest with us today. So guys, if you are new in the business, thinking about getting in the business or whatever the case is, or if you've been in the business for a while and you have no clue how to integrate social media into your actual day and how to reach and uh, close new clients using social media, this is the episode for you. We're going to get into all of that. We've got Ronnie Phillip out of Dallas here with us today. We'll bring him in in a second. But first, uh, the junior grandmaster himself, who is also very active. Uh, he is, uh, I don't know if he's what Grant Cardone would call him, omnipresent. He's definitely unipresent, as in he's everywhere on Facebook. Uh, I don't know about any other platform, but you're definitely unipresent. Um, Greg, the junior grandmaster himself, what's up today? What up, Pimpin? Dude, Ronnie's going to make it rain for us today. I'm super pumped to have him. Dude, today's been an incredibly active day. Um, I mean, dude, I, uh, I've been doing calls literally since I've got out of the gym this morning from different people that have been uh, hitting me up for just one-off questions. Then I had this little clink, 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 clink in my car. I'm like, ah, you know, it's probably just like my couple belts that need to get fixed or something like that. So I took her down to my, my car guys down in San Ramon, and they're like the most honest, ethical, upfront, you know, uh, car guys ever and I, had, I brought like 300 bucks with me i'm like that should be enough nope <laughs> you brought, you got brought a, 300 got, bucks with hey, you to a mercedes dealership no dude i took it to my de dealership oh, and, and okay. they're very very cool and they know they're very honest and i thought it was gonna be a couple of bucks i mean how, how much does it fucking cost to tighten belts right no that's a 1900 hundred dollar bill because i blew gaskets and there's all kinds of corrosive everything everywhere and it's one big client cluster f up in there so Besides doing that, dude, I recorded the uh, the our, my session for the Agent Success Summit, uh, 2017 version on getting business now in tech. Very much in line with what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to shut up and let Ronnie come in because he's, he's way smarter than me on this stuff. And I just want to make, let him just teach me because I have my Hobbit pad ready. It's ready. And there's a fresh sheet of paper <laughs> with your name on it. Right there. <laughs> That's right, which Greg will summarily lose, as he does every time I ask him for something that he took notes on his Hobbit pads. Uh, he's like, well, I have one with me, but it's not the right well, one. I mean, could seven. you look through that? Could, could you search, can you search through this for me real quick and tell me where, where are those notes are you looking for? Yeah, that'd yeah help exactly. Me. Google, can you please solve my search problem, which is how, <laughs> how can you search through and find something in Greg's Hobbit pads? Anyway, <laughs> Monty Phillip, welcome to the show. How's it going? Good. How about you guys? We're awesome. What's up? So, so we're super psyched to have you. People have probably seen your Facebook lives. You run in the same circle with uh, with Brian Casella and Colton Lindsay, and and I believe uh, AJ Mida is another member of kind of that Four Musketeers uh, group that you guys have going on, if I remember yeah. right. So people have definitely seen you guys around, and you're doing a ton, not just with Facebook Live, but also with integrating in, in Instagram and Snapchat into your kind of personal brand building marketing plan. So you and I hooked up and had a great time chatting at um, Keller Williams Family Reunion. I think it was like, what, last month or two months ago in Vegas. Yeah, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you kind of shared with me what you're doing and shared some you know, some things that I hadn't really thought about, some some ideas for the ways that you're using it, as well as ways that you can track what you're doing and essentially reach out and kind of really build actual real relationships with people where Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and all this stuff, they're only tools to actually build real relationships with real actual human beings, which is kind of the <laughs> point of all this. And so you have some really great strategies to do that. So uh, before we get into the actual tactical stuff, though, Ron, give us uh, give us an idea of kind of where you're at, how long you've been in the business, and what your business uh, looks like right now. So uh, I'm Ronnie Phillip with the Kingly Group at, at Keller Williams. So I uh, I started real estate when, um, when I was 21. I'm 23 years old now. So got licensed September 2015. And um, so. Forgot the question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you've been in real estate for two years. You're you're based out of yeah. Dallas right now. So Dallas yeah. is growing and growing like a weed. You've got all this opportunity you're surrounded with. Yeah. Um. So what does your business look at right look like right now? Are you working predominantly buyers, sellers? Like what what's what's the what's your daily life like as far as the types of clients you work with? Um. I focus on sellers. Uh. But I do work with buyers as well. Um. Mostly heavy. I've tried to focus me more list heavy than uh, buyer heavy, and mm -hmm. um, the type of clients I usually work with is millennials. So I'm the millennial mm -hmm. real estate agent. Yeah. Nice. I like that. Yeah. I, I love the tagline for uh, what, Ronnie. Please let everyone know what your tagline is because I think it's just one of the most awesome ones ever. Uh, the the beard is the brand. 
Yeah. Not, is that it? <laughs> that is awesome, man. He showed it. We were doing pre-show. He's like, dude, check out what I did to my beard on, you know, on Snapchat or Instagram or one of those things. I'm it's the a, old guy in the Facebook group. Sto- Facebook story. So I, oh. that's a new thing I just implemented today. So I'm still trying to figure it out, you know. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm playing with that a little bit, and like their Facebook day, your Facebook story, you know, all these things that they're new tech. They're they're interesting. They're fun. They don't have quite the the reach that some of the other platforms do because people aren't used to them. They don't know that they're there. But I think that if you get into them, and you're an early adopter, like you're starting early adoption on this. I think it'll see, it would be a big playoff, and what would be a big play for you? I mean. Mo, uh, Midori, millennial. I was gonna call her millennial. Midori. <laughs> uh, she showed me today how I could use Snapchat and then I could save it to my film, my camera roll. Then I could put it onto Instagram and forward it over to Facebook. I'm like, fuck. Why didn't you're three feet away from me for the last like six months and you never share this? She's like, well, I thought you knew. I'm like, I'm the old guy. <laughs> I got gray in my beard. Well, shit, shit, in, in her defense, to be fair to her, you do know most of the stuff before the rest of us do, because you're constantly keeping an eye yeah. on this stuff, and you're listening to, uh, you know, Social Media Examiner and 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 those outlets that actually share that stuff before the general public even knows. So, in her defense, she has a reason to believe that you might have known about that. But uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. so Ron, you're working with predominantly sellers, but let, let's dip into a little bit. Uh, you shared with me kind of how you're using the the relationship building with millennials to then reach out to the older generation share with people what you mean by that i mean what uh with like millennials and different things like that those are the people i am a millennial right so um people like to work with people who they know and trust so i really focus on the millennials especially people a little bit older than me um you know what different life changes uh going (laughs) on in my in their (laughs) life and then also the young kids. So um, I really focus on that and look to build uh, relationships with them and then, you know, get to know them and get to know their family and then their friends, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love your approach because you're going in, you're, you're building relationships with millennials, but then you're piggybacking off of that to kind of ask like, hey, who else? Like what's what's the next, like their, their older siblings, right? Or their parents. Yeah. So you're building relationships with them. But then you're using that as a springboard, like, hey, you're not really ready right now. And, and of course, if you unless you want to work with the um, the first time home buyer crowd, which is kind of a recipe for a giant headache, in my opinion. But um, you know, I love first time home buyers, man. Good, good for you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for you. Uh, but if you if you want to work with second time home sellers that have like been through it and they kind of know, and you want to work, you know, about four hours per listing and not want to blow your own head off, yeah. um, you, you need to. <laughs> You need to work with people that are kind of, you know, 30 to 50 years old, and maybe they got a kid or two, or as Greg says, three fat ones uh, that have uh, <laughs> constant need for like an insulin, like a constant IV drip of insulin. Uh, <laughs> so the idea that you're that you're using like all these platforms to kind of build relationships with millennials, but then piggyback off of it and go after their older siblings and their parents, and you're building trust kind of like kind of by proxy. So you're becoming kind of the go-to guy that the millennials think about, but then when they hear of somebody in their family or friends or social circle that, that needs something, they're thinking of you because you're in front of yeah. them all the time. Now, how are you asking, like, when, when you go for the jugular, right, and you're kind of going from just building the relationship to actually asking them, like, hey, you know, who do you know? Or, you know, are your older siblings or are your parents or somebody that you know that, you know, how are you asking and kind of going after those relationships to start connecting with them so that you get access to that more older crowd? I think mostly it's just, just being me. Like, um, like I, I don't really like directly ask and I probably should, but, um, most of the time it's just adding massive value to their, to their lives. Like how can I help them? Not only in real estate, but just them as people, as human beings. Like yeah. my goal is to, you know, serve them in any way I can. If that's buying, selling, investing, real estate. Hey, if you need like a plumber or something, if you need an electrician, anything like that, I invest mm-hmm. into real estate as well. Like my dad invests into real estate. I work with investors. So mm-hmm. anything I can do to serve them, that's what I do. And then naturally the referrals will start coming. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, that is just being a, having a servant's heart, not a you know self-centered heart. You know, you're really just out there for the best of them in all ways, shapes, and in, in anything else. But in, a lot of people don't get that. I mean, was that instilled into you by your father since he's been in the in, in, is in the investment game? Was it something that you just naturally had? Is it the guys that you're running with and the gals that you're running with that, that taught you as you got into the business? How did you pick that up at such a young age? I mean, it's mostly how my parents raised me and also uh... – being at Keller Williams Realty, 
Um, they really teach on uh, coming from a place of um, contribution. Mm -hmm. So um, that's really important to me. And like, I want to be the real, not only the real estate agent, obviously, but I want to be the real estate resource and helping them with anything, any questions like, hey, uh, my friend's looking for an apartment in a different state. I'm going to go and find an agent for them. That's what yeah. I'm going to do, whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know that that's one of those things like you'll hear people will hear me and dude, big shout out to Prime Seller Leads, Matt. We just uh we just partnered up with Prime Seller Leads. We're gonna be working with them. Their owner was watching me do calls the other day doing my prospecting calls. And one of the things that resonated with to Ronnie's point is the fact that I mean, I was sitting talking to this chick that has a house in Maine, and so I completely went off the reservation and I stopped talking about houses and I went talking I started talking about, you know, lobsters. <laughs> and I started talking about weather. I started going just off the reservation, and, but I built a connection and a rapport. Dude, she lit up like a Roman candle. She's like, oh, man, lobsters here don't have a – you can't shine a candle to the main lobsters. I'm like, I know. And I, Did I know? No, I've had like a half a tail. I can't be like, whoo, best thing ever. But it was really a way to build rapport and, and be there to serve her, but yet have from there that, that trust being built and then ask what I can do to serve them. Can I help you rent, invest? Are you guys going to stick around? Do you need a good attorney? Do you need to probate? I mean, what can I do to help you? And Ron, I'm going to give you high fives and knuckles to you, you know, just for doing that because, you know, people just at your age and other agents, you know, in this industry just don't get it. And you mm -hmm. pick it up young, man. You have a really good, strong career ahead of you. Purely, just on that one fact, you have a very strong career, not to mention all the rest of the goodness we're going to talk about. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So let's talk about uh, some of the tactical stuff. Let's get into Facebook Messenger a little bit. So obviously there's been some some massive changes, guys. If you're listening to this after the fact, we are recording or broadcasting this in uh, uh, on the cusp of April of 2017. And so we've had a lot of changes where Facebook has kind of rolled out a lot of Instagram and Snapchat type features into Facebook Messenger. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, I know I know for one, I am shocked, shocked that Facebook shocked. would copy any other social network and steal their features and uh, incorporate yes. them into, into Facebook. But anyway, uh, so we've come out with some interesting stuff like Facebook Messenger Day, which is kind of like mm. Instagram stories or, or Snapchat. Um, so it essentially gives you the ability to have kind of a, a, a graphic or like a short video clip, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that shows up at the top of Facebook Messenger where people can kind of check in with you and actively see what you're up to rather than just a direct message from you. So, Ronnie, how are you tinkering around with all these new features and, and seeing how it incorporates into uh, what you're already doing with Snapchat and Instagram? Um, with Facebook Day, I actually haven't tried that one out because I, lo I looked at it, and uh, I'm, still, I'm still trying to see where people are active because I noticed some of the millennial friends. Like, for example, both of my brothers, like one, one my little brother, Ryan, he has no social media whatsoever except Snapchat. That's his only platform. Seriously. What? Yeah. Wow. No. How, how old is he? He's 21. Good God. So which I, I think he's missing on the entire world, right? And yeah. then my brother, uh, my older brother Royce, he yes, has. There's a whole world of there's a whole world yeah. of cat videos on Facebook. He's missing yeah. out. Yeah. He's missing Greg, out Greg, a lot. Don't worry. Have him. Greg will Greg will send him some videos. I will, we'll I will hook him up with all the past greats, all all, all the legendary <laughs> ones. I I have sent to Matt already. He has archived them and watches them every day because he loves them. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he has Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Snapchat. So okay. I'm looking at these platforms. Twitter is dead. Those of you yeah, watching yeah. right now, it's it's dead. It's it's done. It's not you're not you're not gonna get that much interaction anymore. Like it's done. Mm, it was only it was wow. probably cool back in high school, but now I I think it's it's on its way out. But um, yeah, like. Those those platforms like uh, Facebook Messenger or what I do is for most of the time, like I add people from all walks of uh, life from my, uh, you know, I went to like many different schools when I was younger. Like I went to a Christian school. I went to a charter school. I went to a public school. I went to like a community college, like all these different uh, areas of my life. I just like like to connect with people from the past and it's not to get business from them but i am genuinely curious to see how they're doing like my friend from kindergarten you know i want to see how they're doing from you know i i haven't seen them since third grade so i like to reach out to people like that and um just see how they're doing and see how i can help them you know so what do you do are you, are you you're doing that on facebook messenger is that right yeah now are you using the 15 second video the one minute audio or are you just doing it typing Typing. Most of the time, uh, 
I'll reach out if they have some big event in their life, like m marriage or engagements, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But I don't reach out just to reach out. I reach out because I'm genuinely interested in them. Right. You know what and I, I mean? Yeah, I do the same thing. I love doing videos of people because I, I mean, not video. Yeah, I like doing birthday wishes in a video, um, uh, Facebook yes. Messenger or a text video message because it's yeah. super, it's a lot more personable and it's something mm -hmm. that will definitely make you stand out. And if you're, and you, know, you say, hey guys, let's get together and let's grab a cup of coffee or a beer or something, you don't, I'm sure you don't like, hey man, you think about buying or selling your real estate in 2017? No, 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 that, that's about as hot as a brick of, a brick of uh, ice. That's not going to go anywhere. But I mean, if you just want to reconnect with them and they people yeah, will smell the that on you. That, mm -hmm. And that's the goal is to reconnect with people. Like I have I haven't talked to in a, a long time. And my goal is to just nurture that relationship and see what I can do to support their goals and, and their dreams. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's it. That, that's why I look for. You know, well, yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong. When when we talked in person, one of the things that we chatted about is that you'll kind of keep an eye on on the the mutual connection. So you'll look for the things that are important to the people that you're connected to on Facebook and the things that they're commenting on. Uh, yeah. So like you know, when they comment on like friends of friends, which is kind of how you find sometimes that those extended connections that end up being leads is some, yeah. somebody like that's in your network, somebody that's a friend of yours on Facebook will comment or they'll congratulate somebody or whatever. They'll comment on something and then that gives you a forum where you can comment, yeah. And then they'll like it and then you follow that up with like a Facebook message and you kind of just walk them gradually up that permission ladder essentially yeah. to where you can message them directly and then you just you know say something very personal and it's like no nothing business related but it's just building that relationship and yeah. then you'll capitalize on that like once you have a little bit of a conversation then you connect with them so that then yeah. they start to see your stuff right so it's and that's what's interesting about this whole how social media is changing everything is Greg. There used to be kind of the you meet somebody and you know, like, hey, you know, if you're ever thinking about you know doing anything in real estate, let me know. Well, now everybody can see what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, like everybody's social media is public, and you know, they have a profile. It's very easy for people to see what you do, and they see your content and stuff like that. So it's kind of done away with the necessity of kind of remind, like, verbally telling people and asking for referrals a little bit or reminding them that you're in real estate because now they know and they're seeing it every day. So yeah, now the question is how do you can just connect with them in a like very soft relationship based way and just kind of get them into your world. And then Ronnie, yeah. you're just putting out content, you know, valuable content consistently that tells them you're in real estate. So you don't have ever have to really do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just uh, adding massive value with content. So mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, if, like, uh, for example, that, uh, that, um, example of commenting, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll comment and, and different things like that. And, uh, if they engage with me or, or if I find their comment funny, I'm, I'm going to reply to it because mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there, there's always those jokesters on there. I like to laugh. <laughs> so, you know, I'll connect with those type of people or, or people that I've probably seen around, but I haven't like really met in person. No. And dude, I've built so many great relationships just from that. Yeah, it really is. It, it's it's our new our, our new uh, it's our new language, I guess. You know, emojis are are a language that are up and coming that 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 you can speak by themselves. The gifts, you know, are a way to communicate without using nonverbal communication. Are, do you are you with social media, with Facebook specifically? Are you starting or are you already creating custom lists lists? For people so that you can go and just go to your clients, past clients, real estate, you know, whatever kind of list that you want to do. Because Facebook already creates their own list. But you, are you creating your own custom lists to follow up with people to even be more omnipresent, you know, at all times? Um, as far as lists, no, I haven't implemented that yet. But that's something in the, in the works. Um, and we can talk about uh, different things as far as those different lists on what to what to do. But there is like there's a uh, there's a feature called see first. Have you all heard of that? Like whenever you're following some someone, you can just click see first. No. On there. Okay. Wait. So. Uh, I'm a, so when, I got, when you're following somebody on Facebook, you can click see first that their posts start coming up in your feed. First. Uh, towards the top. Before, yeah. Yeah. Before anyone else. So like mm -hmm. certain like maybe like certain certain people I I want to get to know better. I put them as C first or interesting people. I put them as C first because then Facebook is just a sea of information, right? Mm -hmm. So, so see, you can see the little. It's a little star. So 
So you can you can click on that, and then as soon as their stuff comes up, you can in interact with their posts because uh, you want them to see your posts as well, right? Because you're, yeah. you're putting out content and stuff. So that's one tool that I would recommend y'all implement. So let me let me clarify this really quickly. Is that on the mobile application only? Is it on the desktop application? And is it where do you go? Where do you go see this? I mean, where do you see this? Like see first button, the star. Where do you see that? It's on uh, it's on the mobile application. I don't think it's on the the regular one. I'll I'll show you on. So for example, Greg McDaniel, right? You see. I'm gonna see first, right? Yeah. You yeah. click. I, I'm at I'm at following, and then you can click see first, and then it clicks. It's let's do it. Prioritize who you want to see first. Done. Done. And then you see that little star right there. Yeah. Okay, you can see that. Hmm. And then now all your all your all your content gets seen first on my timeline. Okay, cool. so. I gotta figure this out. I gotta dick around with this more often because for some reason I've never seen that. Yeah. And I've got to see that. That's really that's a great little tip right there. That's fantastic. Now, can you can you can you put like everybody see first? <laughs> or is uh, there? <laughs> I mean, do you, do you call like whenever you're nurturing relationships, like Facebook knows it's 53 relationships. You see the same like 50 people on your Facebook feed, yeah. so. So um, prioritize who you want to uh, build relationships with. So I, I I I just do on from from different parts of the field, different vendors, different people in my life. I put a C first, so I, that way I can keep up with them and keep interacting on their posts. So that way um, creates more engagement and things like that. So that's a much easier way than doing the the list. I mean, no, lists are can, great too. I like to see first. That's a really good tip, guys. Really really cool tip. Yeah. All right, so we've got a, like three different people have asked the same question uh, using a business or a friend Facebook account. So um, I'll, I'll give my two cents on it, and then Greg, you can and Ronnie, you can pipe in here. But so <clears throat> so the the change that Facebook made a while back, where they essentially changed the algorithm so that business pages are super li low priority in people's um, feeds. Mm -hmm. So now you're lucky, like that. There is a lot of the people that I pay attention to that host their own podcasts or they run, you know, speaking, consulting coaching businesses, whatever the case was, they were like devastated, very upset when Facebook made this change because what happened was they had spent years building up these audiences uh, on their Facebook business pages and all of a sudden maybe five or 10%, maybe sometimes even 1% of their audience was now seeing their post when it used to be 100% of their audience would see their post. So what's yep. happening now is the strategy is if you're going to look, you should never, ever run a campaign to try to get more likes to your Facebook page. That That is done and over with as, as far as I know and as far as I'm concerned, especially for myself, uh, because it's not going to show that like people just aren't going to see the post. What, what Facebook wants to have happen is they don't want you spamming a bunch of people with your, your business posts, right? So what they want to do is they want to see, they want to show it to, to a few people that are in your audience, people that have liked your page, and then they want to see what people respond to. And then they want you to throw gas on the fire by paying them to put it in front of more of your own people, mm -hmm. right? So they're going to say like, hey, this post is performing better than 90% of the other posts on this page. Would you like us to boost this post out mm -hmm. to other people, throw five or 10 bucks on it? So that that's what's happening. So um, so my girlfriend, Kristen, works for a brokerage here in, uh, in Temecula, and we've had this conversation because they're – one of the reasons they brought her in was to boost the page likes on their Facebook page. And I'm like, oh, my God. Matt, you're dating on your like you're, keep keep you're, you're, you're dating on you're, you're cheating on your wife Julie and your three obese little babies. You have a <laughs> girlfriend right. on the side. Yeah, I left them. I left all that Julie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it's frustrating, Ronnie, because it's it, stuff changes as you know all the time, and people are not keeping up with this. So, Ronnie, you, you're doing everything as I understand it, mostly through your personal Facebook profile, right? Oh, absolutely. Everything is done through my personal Facebook page. I mean, I yeah. I have my business page. I have Ronnie Philip Real Estate. I have. Uh, the Kingly group, but I don't really like post like content on there as, as much, you know, like most of my stuff gets seen on my, on my personal page. Like, so that's, that's what I've been using just my personal page. And I've learned this uh, strategy from Ryan Stuman with hardcore closer. Mm -hmm. So with the social media stuff, he's really, really helped me out on that. Yeah. Cool. Greg, what's your, uh, what's your perspective? <laughs> Mike says Matt's girlfriend is hot. Thanks, Mike Holbrook. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg, what's your perspective on it? 
I did the same thing Ryan does. Well. I, mean, I, I made a decision a year and a, a little over about, about actually about a year ago, almost of the day, I decided to take my personal page. I had about 1,700 friends on it, and being a single guy, what do what do you do? Go out and friend every single hot chick in real estate that you have more than four, two friends with. Very effective uh, tactic, I thought, after having a few beers and a steak. And uh, yeah, I woke up in the morning, had 150 new friends. So I started then friending everybody that I had more than two friends with, guys and girls all over the country. Built up my friends very, very quickly. Within, within like two or three months, I had 5,000 friends. Uh, and then, you know what, then I started the follow side. So I've got over 7,200 people following me now, because that's where you can build the follows up as much as you want. And I think that that has been a very easy way for me to communicate because Matt, back, back to your reference when it comes to the algorithm, um, what they also are looking for is that they're looking for three, three criteria to really be pushing that post all the way through the top. One, is it entertaining? Two, is it educational? And three, this is the cream on the top, is it done on a Facebook Live? If it's done on a Facebook Live platform and you're funny and entertaining and there's engagement, they'll keep pushing this up and up and up and get more and more engagement and more visibility on it. Because like Ronnie was talking about, and Matt, you and I have talked about, you know, mm -hmm. the Facebook Live, I mean, that is their new toy. They are playing with this thing like nobody's business and it is raw and it is um, uh, uh, original content yes. for them. So the yeah. spiders are just loving this thing and it's shooting yeah, their SEO. Anything that helps, if you can do something as a marketer yeah. that keeps people on Facebook for longer, Facebook will automatically kind of, you know, mm -hmm. tilt towards your favor. But, well, let's get into that, Ronnie. Let's talk about what you do on Facebook Live. So what uh, what kind of content are you putting out there and, and what are some of the some tips that you have for people to jump, kind of jump into that game? Okay, so um, question for the viewers that are watching your show is what is the most content you engage with on Facebook? So it's videos and it's memes, right? Mm -hmm. There's that, those are mostly like you, for most people, I love to read, but most people don't read all these long posts and stuff. So um, Facebook Live has been an excellent tool in building my personal brand. So um, there's different types of content I do. Um, I have the Ronnie Phillips show where I bring someone that inspires me onto the show. And then I ask them questions kind of podcast style, but I, they're literally like right next to me, you know? So, um, I do that. Um, and that's been, that's been receiving very, very well. People love the Ronnie Phillips show. So, I, uh, the goal is to do it once a week. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and the second is I talk about stuff in my, in my life, right? Like whether that's, um, you know, like I, I did one about uh, being my true self, like being your true self, like how uh, being your true self is important and why it's mm -hmm. important to live your life without a filter. So that's more like a quote unquote <laughs> motivational video. So I, it, it's like speaking from the heart, right? It's nothing to do with real estate, nothing like that. But I just want to show them what, what type of Yes, yeah, so it's it's what's going through your head anyway. Like yeah. you're you're aspiring to be a successful person, so it's not just it's not just success motivation. It's genuinely what you're learning and thinking about, and like what's going on in your head at that time. Or there's like 17 year old kids. They're probably or some kids younger than me or people older than me coming to me advice for advice on a certain topics. So what mm -hmm. I like to do is like I, I help them through it, and then I make a a live video on it because there's probably more people out there that are struggling with these uh, type of uh, problems in their lives. So I like to do videos like that. And uh, one person who's really good at doing that is Brian Casella. Uh, mm -hmm. He's in the Real Estate Hustlers Mastermind. Absolutely incredible. And Colton Lindsay as well, like mindset stuff. So yeah. um, learn, learn that from them. And um, so that's another one. Uh, third one is, um, a series with like different people. So like I'll, I'm going to have a series with my lender on different subjects. Like we did buying versus renting and it got like, I think it's like 2,600 views. It hit a thousand views, like the first five hours and 25 nice. shares. So like, wow. Adding, nice. adding, adding massive value um, to your audience. So it's like switching it up. Like it's not just real estate every day, every day, every day. It's just switching up the content. Then, uh, the first, the the first thing, first Facebook Live ever was uh, an open house, a video tour. Like um, mm. no one was doing that. I I did that back in probably July, and that is pretty cool because people don't have to come to your open house; they can just watch it on their phone. We live in a virtual world now, 
So yeah. it's just showing different things that are cool about real estate. Like I do a live video and then, and then I go and go through the house and then ask them if they have any questions, just comment and that's it. And then people will reach out. Yeah. I love doing it. I tell that I use it in my listing presentation all the time. I tell them I'm going to do a Facebook live, you know, shoot it out to the world. I'm also going to do a periscope, shoot it out internationally. And then I use the Insta 360 camera uh, that I then will then go in and shoot a 360 camera view, then upload that to, to Facebook as well. Um, I'm, I'm finding that 360 camera. Have you played with 360 cameras at all, Ronnie? Uh, no, I have not, but I think it's uh, it's a pretty incredible tool. There's but right so now, all I've been using is my iPhone 7 Plus. That's it for all my videos. So um, I honestly don't like editing videos is kind of a, a task for me because I've done YouTube uh, before. And mm -hmm. uh, live videos is just, uh, it, it helps me become a better speaker and I don't have to edit it. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, Facebook Live. And it's very interactive. Like every time you hop on, I always say, what's up, Greg? You know, yeah. or anything yeah, like you. that. So um, anytime someone on Facebook Live who provides a massive value is live, I always comment on their stuff every and single it, time. And it helps, man, because the more interaction everybody gets, the more Facebook, you know, sees it, the more people it can reach, the more that you ever reach at that point. So exactly the same. I mean, so like whenever you see someone that you know and like out there, I'm the same as you, Ronnie, whenever I see you out there, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta have to start, get, go get uh, the notification turned on on my phone so that when you go live, I get notified. I don't, I don't think I have done that yet. Mm -hmm. Mine fault. I'm sorry. Bad Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will do that today for you. And I, I encourage everyone else out there. If you guys are, uh, if you guys are liking what we're doing, like what what I'm doing or what Matt's doing or what Ronnie's doing live, you guys first go follow all of us. Stalk us you know, on digital foreground uh, ground, not real ground. Digital stalking. Yes. Yeah, digital, <laughs> no physical stalking. I carry guns. <laughs> They're my fingers. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, follow us and then then, then mm -hmm. just support us because we'll support you back. You know, we'll go yeah. in, we'll give you some likes, we'll be a what up player, just something. We'll all help each other grow. It's very important as a community, we all help each other. Absolutely. absolutely true. Well, yeah, actually, let's let's really take a second, awesome. Ronnie, tell people how they can follow you. And then I want to dive into kind of the uh, the conversation, go deeper on Snapchat and Instagram. But how should people connect with you? Um, uh, you can connect with me on Snapchat and on Instagram at Ronnie Phillip. And then you can just uh, click follow on the Facebook page. And then if you want to like my Facebook pages, you can. It's at the Kingly Group and then Ronnie Phillip Real Estate. And I'm also launching my YouTube channel. This is going to be something I haven't uh, put out there ever. So I'm launching my YouTube channel. So I'll, I'll, we'll go ahead and put a link on there. So that way y'all can subscribe. This is going to be more, uh, more content rich, well thought out videos versus the yeah. live videos. So. Very so that, that's you, where y'all can reach out to me on. Ronnie, are you going to have those produced by anyone? Or are you just going to, I mean, like viral marketing does my, you know, produced videos. Are you going to be using someone like viral? Are you going to just edit it yourself? I mean, what's your plan? Because a lot of people that are watching now and then in the future, you know, they're probably going to have that same question. Well, how do I get it done? I don't, I don't, I, I can't do it myself. Well, um, I, I have a few uh, videographers in mind on what to do. So okay. most, if it's like content rich stuff, like uh, it's, there's going to be like drones, there's going to be all these different things. So um, I have a few people lined up for that. Eventually, I want my own camera crew to follow me around. Like, Dude, like so, really do I. I. <laughs> so do I. I keep, I, I, I keep I, telling Frank yeah, at Viral Marketing, he needs to hire a company historian. And that eventually that's going to be, first it'll be a person and then it'll be a droid. It'll little, literally be a droid that just follows ar us around and documents our lives yeah. on social media. Matt, they me. already have that. It actually it folds up the size of like a VHS tape. And Ronnie, I'm not sure if you know what a VHS tape is. We oh, yeah, man. Yeah. On them. <laughs> They're um, <laughs> not that young, man. Come on. It's kind of like if Netflix came in plastic. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but only one movie. Only one movie. Right. Nose pinch at 35 oh, minutes in. Oh my Perfect. God. Anyway, so it's like, oh wait, now wait a minute. When you say like it folds up to the size of, is it like a, is it like a, like a mini drone that follows you? So it's a, it's a four prop drone and you carry a tracker and it will stay a certain amount behind you and it will absolutely, it will follow you around. It can bump into walls. It won't break the propellers. Um, they have another one called Ellie or something like that. And it's a, it's for outside. It's a much bigger drone. You can throw it in water and anything else. If you're snow, snowboarding, you know, skiing, if you're going, you know, going down a river or something, it will track you. 
I mean, there's a bunch of that stuff already out there, and I can't wait to buy the first one for real estate and annoy the living shit out of my team by like the just yeah. coming around me. Yeah, exactly. It's not like somebody's just following you around, running a sewing machine, just constantly, <laughs> constantly sewing like a new dress for somebody, just over and over and over again. Anyway, all right. Oh so, Greg, how can people follow you on social media? Then we'll get into some other stuff. Stock me, stack me, stack me. Okay. You guys, go to Facebook. Follow me, guys, on Facebook. If you try to friend me, don't friend me. Don't friend me. Don't friend me. Don't friend me. Don't how many times I say don't friend me. You go into purgatory, Facebook purgatory. It's a horrible place. They serve you horrible food down there. Just just, just follow me, guys, and you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing live. Like Ronnie, I do daily shows. We do the podcast. You can ask me questions on uh, on uh, on Messenger. I'll get back to you. So, yeah, please follow me on Facebook. I have Instagram is going to be McDanielCallahan.realestate. You can see my incredibly horrific effort to post on Instagram. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah. yes. Same for me. Pursuing results on both platforms. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, all right. So let's let's dive into Instagram a little bit, Ronnie, and then we'll get into Snapchat. So anything in particular, like what what do you do? What's your typical content for for Instagram? Since it's, I mean, Instagram is meant to be very kind of photographic, very stylized. Do you worry about that stuff at all, or do you just go super authentic? Absolutely. I, I want it to be like like more polished than Snapchat. Mm. So um, mostly it's just personal stuff, honestly. Like I'll throw in an open house uh, or a, a listing here and there, but most of the time it's like trips I'm taking, my motorcycle, uh, friends, um, you know, family pictures, uh, different things like that. Just following my my life. So um, there's a difference between like what you post on Instagram than ver versus what you post on Snapchat. Snapchat's more informal, and then Instagram's like the polished stuff, like the cool stuff, you know? So mm -hmm. I think, okay. uh, how, how often yeah. do you shoot for it? Do you, or do you worry about it all? Are you shooting for a couple of times on Instagram, you know, and then like, what's on, the ratio for that for, for Snapchat? On, uh, Instagram, I think mm -hmm. it's probably maybe, maybe twice a month, maybe once a month on like what I'm doing for like, um, as far as posting photos on my actual like profile. But like yeah. um, for Snapchat, it's a daily thing, every day. Hmm. Like that is like one of, that is the best platform. Y'all hear first, the oh. best platform to interact with millennials. Cause it's so informal, Snapchat. Oh, I know, dude, you guys are crazy. I mean, you guys, you guys hate using your, your digits and typing things. You just want to talk and take pictures and it's like a different language, but yeah, I mean, Midori won't do anything except basically won't do anything except for Snapchat. I mean, everything's Snap. Yeah, uh, it's, and it's, and it's le it's more like it's less uh, formal than like like say uh, someone posts a uh, a picture on Instagram, right? And then you text them, be like, hey, where was that uh, where was that restaurant you ate at? It's kind of weird, right? But if you just <laughs> casually reply to their story, it's like, oh, I went here to Sugar Bacon in McKinney, you know. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things where because it's more informal, the the permission to reach out and it, and it's time shifted, right? So they don't yeah. have to like yeah. Uh, so it's a little, that's what's interesting about Snapchat is it's not because the notifications don't go, it doesn't come across as interruptive when yeah. you're when you're you know messaging somebody directly because they have to open up the application and check it and they yeah. have to actively go and they have to decide whether they want to really hear from you or not so it kind of lowers that permission level and that that's what's interesting like that's the difference between facebook and the phone right now so now we have people that don't answer the phone me and myself included because the yeah. best way to reach us is by facebook or text and then snapchat is like another rung below that where it's even less permission to reach out to somebody, which is great if you're trying to build relationships because then you can reach out to somebody that you would never think, like even if you had their phone number, you would never text them directly, but you yeah. can send them a message on Snapchat and it's totally cool. Like they wouldn't think anything of it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like like someone just messaged me on Snapchat saying, hey, hey they need a uh, real estate agent in another state. Like, mm -hmm. so I'm like, this platform works as far as like, uh, interacting with the people and the goal is uh, like I'm not constantly asking people for like referrals and direct messaging everyone I know on there it's more just like if I see something cool I'm a comment you know like that's I want to get to know and then it's like a sneak peek into their lives mm -hmm. without like ever having to ask what they do like people know I love food 
People mm. know I love motorcycles. People know I'm in real estate. And that's all the content I post and I try to uh, differentiate every day. I don't want it to be all real estate, real estate, real estate, even though some days it is like that because that's, that's all I, I all I really do. But um, <laughs> trying to, uh, trying to uh, differentiate my content so I can add value value to people. Well, you, you've helped me in this conversation. You, Matt, you just woke up that inner per, part of me. I'm like, oh, shit, I got to check Snapchat. How many people want to friend me? Oh, there's five people. Oh, dip, 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 dip. shit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, you know, but it is it is important. I do think that it is, it is important that, that all real estate agents, you need to wake up and hear what Ronnie's saying and hear what Matt and I have talked about in the past. Snapchat is not going away, guys, no matter how much Facebook is going to try to sit on it like the 3,000 pound elephant that it is, you know, and turn it into a has been. Snapchat is super powerful on its own. And they're only going to get stronger. They're the first one that came out with wearable tech. That was their that was their spectacles for 120 bucks. You know that was their that was Gen One. They're going to come out with more stuff. They've classified themselves as, as a camera company, so you can expect more cool stuff to come out like that. And I think it's going to radically train. It's going to be a powerful tool uh, for us real estate agents to both showcase our daily lives, showcase properties, you know, and just kind of let the general public see behind the scenes with us the way we see it. I mean, Ronnie, you, you, you're obviously up on Snap quite a bit. What's your prediction with Snap in regards to, uh, you know, go, going that wearable tech direction? Do you think it's going to take off? Uh, do you think it's going to fall on its face? Do you think, I mean, what were your thoughts? I think Snapchat, um, after today, like on the Facebook, um, with the Facebook stories, mm -hmm. I'm starting to, I'm starting to kind of question like what the the next step is for Snapchat. Like the wearable tech, I think is awesome. Like I'm going to order some uh, spectacles before I go on my uh, trip to San Diego with the real estate hustlers group. Um, but like, it's really, really cool. Like I have some of my friends who use the spectacles and stuff. So I think that's really cool, but I think Snapchat is here to stay. I mean, um, it's, I get the most engagement on Snapchat. Like for, for me, you know, for maybe older people or people who, who like don't have a lot of millennial friends, it might be a different story. But for Snapchat, the most um, low permission way to reach out is Snapchat. Mm. Look, it's really interesting, low permission. I mean, it's in regards to like, because um, I, I come from it a little bit with a different view set. I think that Facebook is a really easy way in to talk with people because you can go look at their past photos and like it or whatever else. Um, and maybe it's just that I'm 38 and you're 23. I'm the old dog in the room with the gray beard, you know, and, you know, <laughs> Sadly, I'm like not the only one, Greg. Yes. But I would like to say that I have dipped my chin in wisdom. Bloop. Ah, right. yes. Blue. <laughs> but uh, it, it's just interesting. Our, our brains are wired, are wired a little bit differently. But well, again, what we need to take into account and I'm talking to myself when I say this is my younger cousins, they legitimately get pissed that I don't like respond to their snaps and, and follow their snaps and watch their snaps. I'm like, dude, I don't give a fuck. But <laughs> <laughs> you need to start to. <laughs> I know. I would just say, hey, start coming up with more entertaining stuff and maybe I'll pay attention. <laughs> yeah, and you can you can you can meet a lot of like like I've built so many great relationships on Snapchat because like there's certain things I'll comment on like their uh like the food they are eating or what, whatever it is, like uh, the trip they're doing in a different state, like I like to comment because, hey, I, I do want to go to those states and I want to see what they're doing and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then just doing stuff like that and just asking questions and and then going from there and see how the conversation goes. So Snapchat is one of the most incredible tools. I built so, so many great relationships on there. So, Ronnie, got a question here from Carla. And by the way, yeah. I love my cousins, and I am actually am interested in, in what they do. I just don't <laughs> have time to to do everything. Um, but Carla's got a really good question here. You know, what type of marketing would you do on Snapchat? And I think that's a really good question. I mean, as far as marketing, that should be your second focus. First focus is, you know, start to portray yourself as who you really are. I think that's the first step. <laughs> like, I love food. I love, you know... I genuinely love real estate. So um, as far as that, first step is to being yourself on Snapchat. Second step is if you, uh, as far as marketing and stuff, like open houses, like, you know, showing like a cool room in a house, uh, doing different parts of the office, um, mm -hmm. different things like that. Like, how do you want to be seen is the question you should ask yourself. And, and um, that's what type of content you should create. And who, who do you want to attract? 
in your life. So um, create content based around that. So basically, it's it's basically you're you're going to market to the people that are like you. So be authentic to yourself, and that will that is your marketing because the people will then resonate with you and then reach out to you, and the interaction and dialogue and you know relationship will form. Is that what you're saying? It basically. Yeah, it's like my the my motto is where clients become family. You know, so I genuinely stand by that. Like. Like one of my first clients ever invited me to their uh, son's first birthday party That's in the awesome. house they bought with me. I That's was like, awesome. it can't get any better than this. <laughs> no, no, it cannot. Not in the slightest. I, I have a re react uh, reaction. I have a result similar to yours. I just got invited for the second year in a row to a uh, past client of mine to the Russian Easter, which basically involves a shit ton of vodka and some weird food. But it's it's a, it's a lot of fun. Like last year, I got yelled at by Grandma Gam Gam. I'm like, okay, ah, uh, Grego needs a little bit of water. She's like, no, drink vodka, no water. I'm like, oh my god, a 90 year old bitching me out about drinking. Okay, this is embarrassing. He is truly Russian. But it, it but it's the relationships that are formed when they invite you into their homes and share you with their families and talk you up. It, it really is powerful to treat oh, to be treated like that. Absolutely, and you know, as far as marketing and stuff. Or you see, uh, you start to see what people are posting on their stories and stuff, and you start to see what they're interested in. So anytime mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, um, Greg is interested in real estate or whatever it is. You like, you like cars, right? I'll always Snapchat yeah. my friends who are interested in cars, cars. Okay, so so <laughs> you know that, I mean? so like Brent, BC, he's all about his, uh, his his whatever the hell that thing is, GTR, GTR. GTR. Y'all yeah, does GTR. Yeah. So if you see GTR rolling down the road, just be like, like direct message. Hey, bro, check it out, man. Thought of you. And then, yeah. then mm -hmm. get the warm and fuzzy. He's like, oh, someone's thinking about me. You know? Yeah, stuff you know? like that. Well, and ideally, you build those groups around stuff that you mutually care about. So if I seen a picture yeah. of a G, like, a, you know, if I seen a GTR rolling down the road, first of all, I go, what the hell is in GRT? <laughs> and um, <laughs> so, so ideally, you'd want to find other people who also care about the things that you care about. So for me, it'd be music and, and books, right? So I yeah. bond with people like when they come on the show or, or when we have conversations offline or with clients or whatever, like I, I find those things. And when uh -huh. I think about them, then obviously I'll, I'll shoot over a message or I'll shoot over an email or whatever the case is. But I, I'm looking for the things where it's not just me making a horribly uninformed effort to talk about the things that they care about. I'm looking for the commonalities, right? Jay Abraham exactly. calls them affinity groups. So you want to, ideally, you want more and more clients that belong to a fellow affinity group with you. Uh -huh. And you have that common ground that has nothing to do with the actual service that you sell. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why... Uh, like like why the podcasting business has started to take off is because once I got really clear about the type of client that I was serving, we're a natural affinity group. We have so much in common because we're all on the same journey. If I went out and offered the exact same type of service to somebody else that I didn't share that affinity with, it would be harder <laughs> for me to build trust with them because we don't have that common ground. So I'm always looking for that, whether it's you know people that love self-education and books and courses and stuff like that. Uh, we can bond over that completely apart from whatever service that they may end up buying from us, you know? So it's very important to kind of look at that in terms of uh, affinity groups. Greg is, is very similar to what Simon Sinek talked about with the, you know, the why, drawing people by your why. Yeah, starting with your why. Mm -hmm. Great, great book and great reason. I couldn't agree with you more, Matt. I like the affinity groups. It kind of has a, a good idea, a good place for people to start. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, because well, Ronnie, you can do that on on Snapchat as well. You can kind of look for those commonalities and you're looking for like when when you're on snapchat essentially what you're looking for is you know when when they put out something into the world where you have something in common like for you you can comment on on food because you're always you know testing out new places and you're very interested in that you're you're passionate about it for yourself so you can like comment in a fun way and you know you're going to have something in common with them so exactly. you're looking for them to kind of step into your world unintentionally a little bit yeah and then you comment that gets you just a little bit closer, and then maybe you'll direct message, and you just keep kind of stepping up that ladder just a little bit until you're connected, and then they start to get your content. And because you already know you have something in common, you know that when they go to check you out, or when they start to see your stuff, they're gonna see stuff that you guys have in common. Yeah, exactly. It's all about uh, uh, finding the common ground between people and being genuinely interested in them.
Yeah, that's, that's one know, of the biggest yeah. things I think a lot of people make a mistake on is that they're not genuinely interested. They come across as fake. Yeah. Because if I tried, I mean, I, I genuinely like food. I, I got into it with an ex, you know, with, with cooking and everything else. I really enjoy it, right? I think it's fun. I, see, I, I wish I had someone to cook with more often. It was good, better at it so I could learn. But, I mean, if you started sending me stuff about food, I'd be like, fuck yeah, man, let's talk about let's talk about this. I mean, how's that happen? Where where'd you get that dish? I mean, that's fun. But if you sent me something, uh, I don't know, about technology or i don't know something about, about fans be like why well, i don't have a thing for fans bro why you send me shit about fans yeah you know but i've tried to fake it and try to screw it up people try to do they try to be someone they're not in this business because they think they have to be someone different to attract the clients that they want to work with but in reality if you're just who you say if you're just you the people that are want that you want to work with will naturally be drawn to you and people just Absolutely. need to understand that yeah very cool yeah i thought so <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ronnie, remember, uh, or remind everyone of how they can connect with you and where the best places are to go. Um, uh, on on Snapchat, it's at Ronnie Phillip, R O N N Y P H I L I P. Um, same thing with Instagram, same thing with Twitter. Uh, you can f uh, follow me on Facebook at the Ronnie Phillip, and uh, also you can like both my Facebook pages if y'all want. Or actually, go and like them. I, I need some more likes on there. Um, <laughs> at uh, at at uh, it's Ronnie Phillip Real Estate, and then the Kingly Group. So, and also, I'll put a link in the description for my YouTube channel, and y'all can go and subscribe to that because I'm gonna be putting out some incredible content on that very very soon. That'd be very awesome. Very cool. You can drop. Yeah. You can also drop it right in the Facebook, you know, chat on this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever, whenever you're after the show or whatever else, that, that helped me just get there. That's a lot what we do. So, Matt, I'm going to cut the line, and I'm going to go first, and I'll let you round it out. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> guys, go follow me on Facebook, please. Um, like Greg McDaniel, Walnut Creek. I'm going to be red shirt, pointed at my hat. You know, it says Real Estate Life. You know, go ahead and hit me up there, guys, because uh, I do a lot of other shows like Ronnie and Matt. So don't miss out on it. It's the first time you've seen this ugly mug. I'm sorry. But uh, go follow me, and that's how you can connect with me. Instagram, Daniel, Mick Daniel Callahan dot real estate is where you can find me on mm -hmm. Instagram. And Snapchat, I can tell you where to go. Probably forget to check it, though. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you don't put out much. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So uh, so I am pursuing results across all platforms, Facebook and Instagram mostly. Uh, you can also go to pursuingresults.com. Uh, for us, you got to go to rockstarprospecting.com and check out mm. the uh, – we've got one more run of this live one course, more. live four-week training course on how to dial into the exact neighborhoods that you want to work in, start building relationships with, with people, build your email list in that area, and start talking directly to the homeowners in the areas that you want to work in, uh, not only to pick up leads, but uh, also to build yourself up as the uh, the expert in that area and start building up relationships with people that you can capitalize on now and down the road. So that is uh, that is what Rockstar Prospecting is all about. Go to rockstarprospecting.com. That class is going to fill up uh, for the April session, and then we're rolling out a new class for the quarter after that. So we've got one session of that. TJ, we've got a lot of great comments, guys, um, from you know Casey and uh, Lisa, TJ, loving the content. Uh, you know, loving Ronnie, what you have to share. So guys, we thank everybody for watching with us live. We appreciate it. Go subscribe to the show on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher, depending on whether you want the video or audio versions. And we are back on Friday with a really interesting episode with a very interesting guy, Franklin Jones. I came across this guy a couple of years ago while I was at Viral. And when he switched over to Keller Williams, he literally capped in a single day. What? This is a guy that sells over a hundred homes pretty much by himself. Now he's since partnered with somebody who also has her own, uh, you know, does the same thing. She's also a listing specialist and they absolutely crush it. Uh, I believe they're out of uh, South Carolina. And uh, wow. we're gonna talk to uh, to him about how he's done that. And he has a, a kind of, Ronnie, it's almost very similar to you, except it's a little bit more real world than social media, but it's mm -hmm. very relationship driven. It's all about kind of being the mayor of your market, right? Just being that person that's out there facilitating, smoothing, shaking the hands, kissing the babies, uh, as uh, I think he would put it, um, just being the mayor of your city, essentially, the self-appointed mayor of your market. So that's what we're gonna talk about with him on Friday. So guys, that's Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 Eastern. So until then, guys, we are yeah, out. guys, we are out. Peace out, ninjas.